today our speaker is uh, Christophe uh, Rittenauer from the Université de Québec à Montréal. Uh, and he is going to speak to us about construction and the parametrization of conjugates of Christoffel words. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Narad, and thank you for the invitation. Uh, this, as you can see on the screen, is a joint work with Jan Bujo, uh, who is in the University of Strasbourg. And uh, <clears throat> so I start my talk. Uh, we, we, we did this work uh, in last fall, essentially. And that's it. Uh, I have to put, go, come on, this? Ah, that's it. So I start with a section called the uh, Christoffel words and their conjugates uh, with some motivation. So, uh, so, but first I define the, I give the geometric definition of Christoffel words. Uh, you, you take any discrete segment, uh, a segment from um, integral point to another one and uh, you add the, uh, uh, in the example, you add uh, this vector seven, four. In general, it's a vector which is, uh, which has two components, integral components, which are relatively prime. Now you, you, you draw the diagonal. And so you are sure that because of the primeness that the, the diagonal will not uh, cross any integral point except the, the beginning and the end. And now we discretize this diagonal by drawing a, a path, a discrete path with the right and uh, let's say um, east, east path and north path, uh, east steps and north steps, pardon. And uh, the, the closest to the diagonal huh? in such a way that the, the pull, uh, the para, the, the polygon that you see, which is uh, delimited by the path and the diagonal, has no integral point except the, on the on the frontier. So this this red path, you can <clears throat> you can uh, code it by letters. A is for the east steps, and uh, B is for the north steps, then you obtain what's called the lower Christoffel word. We, I, we will forget lower because we consider here, I know it's not true, I, lower Christoffel word, this is a lower Christoffel word. And so you can see it's the two, the two first A's, for instance, correspond to, to the two first east path. A, A, B, A, A, B, A, A, B, A, B. And we say that the slope of this path is four over seven, which means that the slope is the slope of the segment of the diagonal uh, by definition. Uh, yes, yeah, so the slope, you can see also that the slope is the ratio of the number of Bs uh, divided by the number of As, <clears throat> because uh, it's easily seen in the figure. And uh, this was the geometric definition. Now I give another, there are many equivalent definitions of Christopher words. Uh, one is the morphic definition. Uh, you, you take the Fremonoid uh, over two letters and uh, you define two endomorphisms, uh, G and tilde D. Uh, the notations, comes from Berstel and Sebold, so I am, uh, je suis fidèle à leur notation. I am faithful to their notations. That's G is for gauche and D is for droite. And the tilde is for some, uh, something. And uh, you consider these, these two endomorphisms. Uh, and then you can, uh, one proves that the set of lower Christoffel words is the smallest subset which contains the letter and which is, uh, which is closed under these two morphisms. Uh, this means that uh, equivalently, you can say that uh, V, 
the word V is a Christoffel word. If you can decode V according to G or D tilde, which means that V is in the, in the image of G or in the image of D tilde, D tilde. Uh, so V equals G of U or D tilde of U. And you continue this recursively for U. And the initial case is that uh, the letters. Huh? So I give you the examples of the word before, the A, A, B, A, A, B, A, B, A, B. You can decode it on this, on the image of G. So you can, it is, the, it is the, in, in the image of G. Then the word, the word which is inside the parenthesis of G, you can decode it again on the image of D tilde. So it's, you obtain what is written on the screen and uh, you continue like this. And at the end, you obtain that the word V is uh, equals to G, D tilde, G cube of B. So this is a, a way, a very quick way to, to verify if a word is a lower Christoffel word. It's a kind of Euclidean division, uh, additive, non-commutative Euclidean division. Well, uh, just some history uh, about these words. These words were introduced by Christoffel in 1875 uh, and Actually, they were discovered also by Smith uh, one year later. And, uh, the, and they appear implicitly in the work of Markov uh, some years ago, uh, later. Uh, the work of Markov is on quadratic forms, binary, uh, indefinite quadratic forms. And uh, the work of Markov uh, is a very deep work which relates which uh, which determines determines the uh, quadratic forms which satisfy some inequality uh, which relates it's the minimum and the discriminant i will not give details here but what uh, the markov was not uh, certainly not aware of the work of christoffel and smith uh, i don't he was a, a very young mathematician at this time and uh, I, it's, but the work, it was noted by Frobenius uh, somewhat later that uh, the, the relation between the work of Christoffel and Markov, Frobenius in 1930. And uh, in Frobenius, in this article by Frobenius, he gives his famous conjecture on Markov numbers. Actually, uh, because in the work of Markov appear uh, lots of, uh, implicit lots of numbers. Uh, what's called the Markov numbers are is, are in um, integral numbers. Je sais plus comment dit comment dit nombre entier mais moi je suis perdu. Nombre entier. Integer. Integers, oui. Pardon. Uh, natural integers. Uh, Markov numbers are very special natural integers and. Uh, which, uh, which parameterized uh, his uh, quadratic forms. And in Frobenius gives a conjecture, which is still open. I can give you quickly the, this conjecture in the present framework. You, you define a, a representation of the free monoid into uh, the group SL2 of Z by these, uh, <clears throat> by mapping by defining mu of A and mu of B uh, like this. Well, this uh, looks a little bit strange, these matrices, but they come from continued fraction and it's well motivated. Then what is implicit in, in the, what is proven in the work of Markov is that each Markov number is one third of the trace of mu of W for some Christoffel word W. Uh, this is the, the may, Markov numbers may be defined like this. They may be defined differently also, but that, that is one of their definition. And now comes the conjecture. The conjecture says that the Markov number injectivity conjecture, or sometimes called Frobenius conjecture, is that this word is unique. I, this means that for each Markov number, there should exist only one, exactly one, 
Christoffel wrote W such that one third of the trace of mu of W is equal to this Markov number. So let me continue now more in the in our work. Uh, two words: why we consider why it, is it interesting uh, to consider conjugates of Christopher Wolf? First, uh, conjugate you everything. I, I think everybody knows that uh, a conjugate of if W you, if you factorize W as U V, V U is called a conjugate of W, and you can equivalently uh, define the conjugates by using the the mapping called C, um, the mapping C called the conjugator. Huh? C of a word, here the AIs are letters. C of a word is you take the, this word, you take the first letter of the word and put it at the end. Uh, and if you continue uh, uh, iteratively, you obtain all conjugates of, of the word. So for, for example, the conjugates of this word A, A, B, A, B, you, you have these five words, including itself. And uh, each time I put the first letter at the end. Well, now, if you remember the formula for Markov number is one third of the trace of mu of W, you see that actually if you replace W by a conjugate, uh, by a conjugate of itself, uh, it gives the same value because uh, the trace is uh, because the trace is uh, invariant un uh, under conjugation of matrices and and because view is a, is a homomorphism. The, now uh, there is also a very a nice result of um, Bertel de Luca, which says that Linden words on the alphabet A B. Uh, lin, uh, linear words on the alphabet AB, which are Sturmian, meaning that they are finite factors of a Sturmian sequence, of an infinite Sturmian word, are exactly the Christoffel words. And this, this implies that uh, a word is conjugate, is a conjugate of a, Christopher, if of a Christoffel word, if and only if all its conjugates are finite Sturmian words. There's also a very nice um, characterization of uh, conjugates of uh, con uh, Christoffel words. Uh, you consider the free group on two letters, A, B, and the, the conjugates of Christoffel words are maybe defined as follows. They are positive, which means there is no negative exponent, it's, they are actually in the free monoid and not in the free group. They are cyclically, cyclically reduced. Uh, yes, this is, I think it's a little bit redundant because, uh, I, anyway, positive implies cyclically reduced. You can, uh, you can forget, forget this cyclically reduced. And they are primitive. This is the uh, <clears throat> important uh, property primitive in the sense of uh, the uh, theory of free groups, which means that uh, you can complete, it's a part of a basis of this free group. Eh? In, a, in a free group uh, with two generators, a free group of rank two, uh, all bases have a cardinality two, and each an element belonging to a basis is called primitive. And so the, the Christoffel words are essentially are the the conjugates of Christoffel words are the uh, are the primitive words in this free group and the positive and so other that's it yes and now another very nice uh, um, uh, um, yeah, characterization of Christoffel word is the following you you define what is called perfectly clustering words. Uh, perfectly clustering words, which, which was, uh, I think, uh, which was uh, studied first by Pulisi, Simpson, and Firenze Zamboni. Uh, it means that the last column of its borrow wheels tableau is decreasing. I give an example. So uh, no, let me give forth the example. Uh, you see, you see this word uh, a a b a b. 
I take all the all its conjugates and write it in a tableau, row by row, uh, in in lexicographic order, which means that the first, the smallest one is the upper one, and the and so on. And now you look at the last column of this uh, tableau, and you see that it's a decreasing word, B B A A A, and this is uh, this characterization of Christoffel words is due to Mantacci, Restivo, and Shortino. And uh, a Christoffel words, or, or I mean, a conjugate of a Christoffel words, because it works for any conjugate, this co uh, construction, you, the, the conjugates of Christoffel words are exactly the perfectly clustering words on a two-letter alphabet. This, now also, uh, the, in the work of Markov, Christophe words appear uh, to, they appear implicitly and they parameterize the Markov binary forms and also their minima. And the conjugates of Christophe words uh, correspond to the small van values of these quadratic forms. This is another work which I will not, I will not say more about this. Now, this was motivate, motivation of, of conjugates of Christopher words. Now, we come to the actual work. We wanted, we have parity, our work is, begins by, uh, our work with Jan begins with a parametrization of conjugates of Christopher words. So, uh, we fix a sequence of positive integers, a finite one and the finite sequence of positive integers. And for technical reasons, we define the, the sequence is A, A1, A2, A and we define another sequence, B1, B2, which is the same except for the first element, which is one less. So B, B1 could be zero. B1 equals A1 minus one, and the other Bi's are the same as the Ai's. Now, we, we mimic for finite words, uh, a recent construction of Yann Bujo together with Michel Laurent for infinite words. And it goes like this. We, we have our fixed, uh, now we have for the whole talk here, I, I can say, we could say that A, the sequence AI and BI is fixed. But now we consider another sequence of integers, which could be negative in Z. Uh, we define uh, a sequence of words, vi, which depend on this sequence di, and it, it, is, uh, it is defined recursively as follows. We begin by v minus one, which is b, and v zero is a. And then comes this formula, vi is defined uh, in, in function of the two previous v, vi minus, vi minus one and vi minus two by this formula. So look at the exponents. The exponents are at the right, it's di, which is the, our sequence of integers. And, uh, and the left exponent is the complement of this di with respect to bi. So it's this formula, just comment. I have com I comment a little bit this formula because it's, at the heart of the whole construction. So uh, this construction maybe makes sense for any integers di, but, uh, so, but if in general, if you take a negative di's, uh, the vi's will not be words, but elements of the free group. And so we, we restrict the di's with this condition, zero, uh, di must be between zero and bi. And, and with this restriction, the vi's are all words in the free monoid. Let's look at the particular case of this construction. All di is equal zero. And so, because um, uh, I can take, I can suppose that all di is equal zero. And if all di is are zero, the formula is much simpler. The, 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 last, the, the last factor in this formula 
disappears. So we call these, uh, these special VIs depending on the sequence zero is denoted MI. And we have the formula, which is it's the formula restrict the previous formula restricted to this case. MI equals MI minus one power BI and uh, and M multiplied by MI minus two. And one uh, sees that this construction is the same as the construction of standard words by Aldo De Luca in the paper by, it appears in the paper by De Luca and Mignosi. And it's also equivalent to what's called the Rosy rules. Um, now, let me, and, <clears throat> ah, yes, a standard word. Let me recall what, what uh, it's called a standard word. It's a standard word is, is obtained from a Christopher words by, by applying once the conjugator. Huh? The C here is the conjugator, huh? taking the first letter, put it at the end. For instance, if you take the Christopher words A, A, B, A, B, you put A at the end, you obtain A, B, A, B, A. It's a standard word. Uh, now, uh, let me recall uh, properties which are well known that in, <clears throat> in a conjugation class of a, of a fixed Christoffel word, you, you, you can find two Christoffel words, the lower and the upper. I didn't uh, define upper Christoffel words, I, but it's obtained in the geometric definition. You, you replace the path under the di diagonal by a path above the diagonal. And the, so the conjugation class contains two Christopher words and also two standard words. Uh, uh, yes, uh, bon, it's a little, let me show this example. You, you start with the lower Christopher word, A, 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 B, A, A, B. This is the lower one. And uh, if you put the A at the end, you obtain standard word. You have also the upper Christopher word here and the standard, another standard word here. Now, so what I think, which is uh, missing in this uh, slide is that the word MIs, yes, the MIs are the standard word. It's not missing because, uh, because I said it here, standard words. The MIs, the, our construction of the VIs restricts for the zero sequence to the standard words, to the construction of standard words of De Luca. Now, recall that we have a, a sequence A and a B with a, this equation, B1 equals A1 minus one, the alls and the other one are equal. So the words, the theorem is the following, the words VM are the elements of the conjugation class of the standard word. So all these words VM uh, with the uh, M is the last, M is the last index of our finite sequence. The all VMs, when, we, when you take different DIs, you obtain all, always conjugate words and they are all the conjugates of, of this M, M uh, subscript small m. Now, we, we can describe the conjugates in the following way. Uh, we know that we can, <clears throat> we can obtain each uh, vm, each conjugate, by applying uh, several times the conjugator and with an exponent big capital N. And which is, what is this capital N? It's exactly this uh, number n equals the sum over all i's of d i q uh, subscript i minus one. What the q i's are the denominators of the convergence of the continued fraction. Uh, so actually, you the the this uh, this second result confirms the first result that that uh, the VM are all the conjugate, are all conjugate. Now, the lower and upper Christopher words, you can obtain them 
by taking alternating what I what we call alternating uh, sequences. Huh? So the BIs, zero, B3, and so on, and the other alternating gives the other Christopher Lord in the class. Now, <clears throat> this the, the equation N equals uh, the sum is called a legal Ostrovsky representation of N. Uh, the word legal, we have take, borrowed it from the condition uh, the, the word legal refers to the condition which we had put to have uh, to obtain words in the free monoid and not in the pre group. This condition was considered by Anna Fried in, in, the, in the paper of um, 18. Um, the representation for n is not unique huh? when you, <clears throat> but we'll see uniqueness uh, with more restriction uh, further in the. So in the theorem, VM depends only on N, on capital N, and not on the digits DI. They, you can obtain uh, the same word. It's a parameter, we obtain a parameterization of uh, conjugates, but not uniquely. So let me, let, let us see a corollary. Uh, uh, Christopher word W is it is well known that if you take a Christopher word, I mean lower one, upper one, it's slightly different. Uh, you can also always write it a product of A followed by a palindrome followed by a B. And this palindrome is called the central word. These words have been studied very much by Aldo de Lica uh, as first. And uh, we, we may deduce the result due to Fried, which we, in a slightly different uh, formulation, uh, in the same paper as before, uh, recall that in the theorem, we have this formula Vm equals C power N of MM. Uh, MM, this is standard word of the, uh, this means that Vm is obtained by taking the prefix of length N and put it at the N. Uh, this is the, because of the definition of the, uh, the conjugator. And uh, we may deduce from the theorem the, this result of, of Anna Fried. Take, let, let n be an integer with legal Ostrovsky representation. Um, n equals uh, this formula. Then the prefix of length n of the central word of the central palindrome P, which the is equal to this product. Uh, this uh, and in particular, this product depends only on n and not on the chosen legal Ostrovsky representation of n. This is uh, very interesting because there are no uh, this invariance property. Now we have uh, in we have a, a result on borders of conjugates of Christoffel words. A border of a word is a non-empty and proper prefix, which is also a suffix. For, for instance, uh, take this W. You can see that this red word is, is a prefix and a suffix. So that's why it's called the border. And it is known and, and not difficult that if W equals UV and if U is a border, then the length of the complementary prefix, uh, suffix, the length of V, if U is a border, then the length of V is a period of W. Uh, you, in the previous example, you can see that uh, the border, the, the complementary length of the border is three and uh, three is a period of W. Uh, there, there may be several borders and period. Uh, the least, if you add the least non-trivial period and the length of the longest border, this is equal to the length of the word. So this means that if you, that borders, length of border and, and periods are, or the length of the longest border, no, that's, uh, I think I cannot say more, that's what is written there. Uh, the, if you know 
the length of the longest border, you also know the, the least period. Uh, yes, uh, borders in, have been studied in, I record several results uh, in this regarding borders of periods. Um, James Curry and uh, Kalesari compute the set of least periods of an infinite domain world. Um, work by Hegedus and Nagy. Uh, they compute also the set of least periods of the whole conjugation class of a Christopher world. And uh, more recently, Melody Lapointe uh, computes the least period of each conjugate of a Christopher world. It is uh, actually it's a consequence of what's called the normal form of the conjugate. Uh, each conjugate can be, for each conjugate, one may give a precise formula for the smallest period. And uh, more recently, even Gabrich, Rampersand, and uh, Narad, and Jeffrey uh, determined the set of all periods of a given finite prefix of a given infinite domain word. And we were were guided by their result. Uh, the result, as a consequence, they have the, they obtain the number of periods. Uh, if you take a prefix of length n, of uh, given infinite Sturmian word, then I think it's characteristic Sturmian word, and then the number of periods is equal to the sum of the digits of the lazy Ostrovsky representation of n. Uh, we, we see further what means uh, lazy Ostrovsky representation, but for the moment, uh, I do not want to give the definition. <clears throat> so our, the next result we have proved is to compute the longest border of each conjugation of a Christopher word. And we use our parameterization. We, we determine each conjugate by the parameterization. So the conjugate, we write it under the form we know it may be written to under the form C power N of uh, capital M subscript small m. Uh, then, uh, and we, we, yes, and we assume that N is given by its Ostrovsky greedy representation. So I must explain what is greedy. Uh, so, uh, the greedy means that it is legal. The legal is always, uh, must be always legal. So uh, legal is that uh, the i is been between zero and bi. And in order to be greedy, you must have this implication. If the i's if di equals e, ai, then the digit before di minus one must be zero. Uh, this is the well-known condition for Ostrovsky representation. And it's particularly known when one considers uh, what's called the second of um, representation, which is the, the Ostrovsky representation uh, corresponding to the to the Fibonacci numbers, uh, or I should say to the, yes, anyway, more, where the QIs are Fibonacci numbers. Well, it is known that the greedy Ostrovsky representation is unique. Uh, before going to the result, recall the construction of the conjugates. Huh? You, we have this formula. Each conjugate is given by this formula. And you see, it is easy to see, uh, it is evident that when t equals the maximum of the two exponents, then, then uh, v, v uh, i minus one power t is the border of v i. This is clear uh, on the formula. But the difficulty here is it's it, the border much maybe longer, but it's not, but it will, we will see it's not much longer. Um, yes. So we also know that Christopher words have no border. Huh? 
Linden words, we know that Christopher words are Linden words and the Linden words have no border. So we exclude Linden words from the next, we exclude Christopher words from the next theorem. So we consider a conjugate with this formula, which is not a Christopher word. And we assume that N is given by the greedy Ostrovsky uh, representation. And so the DIs are the digits of this representation. We define L uh, the same as before. It was denoted T in the slide before. L is the minimum of the two exponents here. And we, we mm. call B the longest border of M, of VM. Now we have a several a case by case uh, theorem where we, <clears throat> it begins by the case if DM equals BM, then B, then the border is VM minus one. Uh, yes, uh, if if DM is uh, include is um, between one and BM minus one, and uh, and and, uh, and similarly for B DM minus one, then the border is what what is expected from the formula. So VM minus one power L. Now there are another case uh, for DM the same case and for D. If dm minus one equal bm minus one, then b is the same, the same b uh, with the power l. And now the fourth case is that if dm minus one equals zero, then uh, b equals uh, the same formula, except for one case when uh, bm minus dm is strictly smaller than dm and if the sequence is not alternating well, it's a little bit difficult to, <laughs> to catch at the first glance uh, and in this case b is a little bit more longer you have to put l plus one and there are i gave you four cases I think uh, uh, yes, and there are many, and there are four other cases which I do not give because it is too technical. So, what I can say uh, is that it is technical. The statement and the proof are technical, and I don't want to to insist on this because uh, it's too technical. Le let me uh, g give another uh, topic. It's what. We, uh, re re we uh, revisit the Sturmian graph. Uh, now, I, I, I promise to give the definition of lazy. Here's the definition of lazy. A legal Ostrovsky representation is called lazy if, if for any i, if di equals zero, then the previous uh, d di minus one must be equal to bi minus one. It's a, it's a little, it's, an opposite condition, I would could say, uh, completely opposite to greedy. Yeah? Uh, I, I recall you, greedy was here. Greedy, greedy, greedy. Here, a uh, greedy is here. Di equals i. Uh, I and bi are the same. I forget, uh, except for the first one. But so greedy is this. So if di equals ai, then di minus one is equal zero. And the lazy is just lazy is here. If di equals zero, then the previous one is b is the full one. This definition was uh, introduced by Epifanio Fruni, Gabriele, Mignosi, and Chalit, uh, and Jeffrey, uh, Mignosi, uh, Filippo, Fruni, Christian Fruni, the other first name I do not know. Ah, uh, si, Chiara, Epifanio, uh, Gabriel, I don't know. And um, LM, now you define the reversal of the, of the words MM, sometimes called anti-standard word. Then record the central word P, so that MM, the standard word MM is equal to PAB or PBA. There are two cases, uh, depending on the parity. Then, the result of Anna Fried on the factorization of prefix of P may be translated in a result of, of um, suffixes. 
each suffix of p has a unique factorization. Uh, with, uh, it's um, with, given by the formula, and uh, it is unique because I take the lazy Ostrovsky representation. I, I didn't say it here, but it's it's known. As for greedy representations, it is known that the lazy Ostrovsky representation of an integer is unique. So the uniqueness comes from here. Um, so that's it. Uh, this result may be translated into a graph. Uh, the graph uh, is, I draw, have drawn it here. It's a graph, the, we call the LIs, the, the capital LIs are the reversal of the standard words MIs. So you, we, you draw a lot of, it's, it's a very linear graph, uh, not, not completely, but um, I, it's better that I give every property here. No, here, uh, you, the, the, if you look only at the horizontal uh, arrows, then Li, for instance, the red arrows, you have exactly how many? It's written here, B, A plus one red arrows. Then you have B, A plus two blue arrows. I mean, the horizontal ones and so on. And you add also round arrows, which uh, are given, uh, I mean, it's, it's, described, if you look at the blue, blue round arrows, you see they all, they have, they, there's one for each <clears throat> vertex uh, corresponding to a source of a red arrow, and then they arrive all at the same place. This, this is the graph, uh, it's a labeled graph, and the result of Anafrid before, which was here, but uh, the reversal result is that the, for each suffix of P, the P is the central word, there is a unique path in this graph, which starts from the origin, uh, completely left, and which, uh, which starts from the other end, and whose label is S. This graph has been obtained completely differently by another method by Epifanio, this uh, Mignosi, uh, Jeffrey and Venturini in uh, uh, before, and they call it the compact draft. And actually they obtain it completely differently by, from, by, uh, they say, they consider the language or the set of suffixes of the central word, the central palindrome, and uh, the, they consider the minimal automaton of this language, and then there is an operation called compaction, which was actually considered much before uh, by Blumer, Blumer, Hausler, McConnell, and Ehrenfeucht. And so they obtained the, this graph quite differently. Uh, these authors, which I just mentioned, also defined the Sturmian graph. And we, uh, you obtain the Sturmian graph from the compact graph by replacing each edge by its length. Uh, so for instance, you, you replace the Li here, each Li by the length of Li. So, and then one has the fo following property that for each natural number from zero to, uh, to length of P, there is a unique path in the Sturmian graph starting from the origin and whose label, but in the additive sense, is N. Now, the Sturman graph may also be, we have noted that the Sturman graph may be embedded in the Stern, Stern Broco tree. And uh, also, and the compact graph also may be embedded in the tree of central words. Uh, the word embedded is a little bit exaggerated, but I'll show you an example. Uh, the vertices are the same, and then one must add some edges. The, what recall, what is the tree of central words? Uh, a vertex in, the, in this tree is a, is a, yes, is a binary word, and its label is pal of u. Pal is the 
famous iterated palindromization mapping of Aldo de Luca. Uh, I show you this on the example. Um, at the left, you see the um, uh, um, an extra <laughs> a morceau du, uh, of the tree of central words. Uh, you, the, it is. Uh, yes. Oh, je sais pas comment dire un morceau du l'arbre. A piece. A piece, yes. Ah, merci. A piece of, <laughs> of the tree of central words. So each, um, the epsilon is the root, and they, then you, you go left and you obtain a. You go one, right, you obtain ABA, and again, and so all on this, uh, all all uh, words you see are central words are palindromes in particular. Now, uh, perhaps we look at the extreme right. Uh, do you see it? Yes, I have to. Yeah, um, at the extreme right, you see a piece of the. Merci, uh, <laughs> merci, Manon. Uh, I, a piece of the. Sternbrocco tree. And the, if you forget the round, round arrows, it's the piece of the Sternbrocco tree. And now you add arrows like this, you take any vertex, and then you draw an arrow from this vertex to the, to the vertex which uh, occurs at the, right after the first turn. Uh, more the example is a little bit small then so you cannot see very well and the the labels of the edges uh, of the arrows are obtained like this first forget the around arrows then the label of for instance the let's say the three which is at the uh, at the bottom the three here uh, it's obtained you add the two digits the two the two numbers you add numerate, numerators and denominators of four and seven, so it's 11, and you sub subtract mm -hmm. the sum of the numerator and denominator of three five, over five. So it's 11 minus eight is uh, three. And all labels are obtained like this, and the labels of the round arrows are obtained by the rule that uh, the label depends only on the, uh, on the, on the outgoing vertex of the edge. So uh, the label three here and the label three is the same because these two arrows uh, point to the same vertex. Now, this, this is the Sturmian graph in, for this particular case. And the, the compact graph here is obtained in the same way, but uh, the non-commutative uh, analog of this construction is the, the labels are depend only the label of an arrow depends only on the uh, the outgoing vertex of the arrow and uh, for instance the ABA ABA is the same here and uh, the and that's it. So this was just a remark on the embedding of these graphs in the stern Broku tree and in the tree of binary of central words. And that, that's, I think it's the end of my talk. Ah, no, not completely. Uh, yes, we could, we didn't determine all borders of a given conjugate. Uh, we have some co conjectures which are a little bit technical and we would like to count them or count the number, the number of periods. And uh, we do not know if the lazy representation plays a role there. And act, we, uh, there is this nice result of uh, Gabric, uh, Narad, and uh, Chefre, which uh, where they can count the number of periods of uh, prefix of a given storm in infinite words. So I have finished here, that's it. Thank you.
Oh, thank you, Christoph. Uh, does anyone uh, have any questions? Aha, Jean-Paul says the first name of Gabriele is Alessandra. Alessandra, merci, merci. <laughs> uh, uh, I think uh, Gabriele has a question. Uh, yeah, yes. Ah, thank you. Uh, nice talk, uh, Christophe. Thank you. Uh, I wonder if uh, this can be generalized to uh, powers of Christophe's words because they share a lot of uh, properties. Uh, in particular, what you said at the beginning about uh, um, conjugates that are Sturmian or the Barrows will transform uh, actually holds for powers of Christoffel words. And uh, maybe all of this can be generalized to. Yes, yes, certainly. I think we have a we have somewhere as a lemma in the paper, a, a lemma on the borders of, which relate the border of a word and the border of its powers. I don't remember the exact formulation, perhaps Jan uh, re remembers. Uh, and so of course it's, uh, it should be considered this case, the case of powers of Christopher words, which, uh, which I know you know very, very well, because you have a, a result on. Uh, I, I call this uh, the terminology is sometimes misleading because what I call Christopher words are the primitive ones, primitive in the sense of communitarian words, and Borel and Lobby, and I know Gabriele, you also. I think what 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 you call Christopher words includes the powers. Huh? I, if I'm if I'm not wrong. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it's just the uh, terminology and uh, and uh, yes, I, I mean, I I, re I refer to your paper where you uh, characterized the the by by special Sturmian words, I think. Huh? It was this. Uh, yes, I think that there, there are. Uh, a lot of things that are related one to another. And mm -hmm. uh, in your talk, it's uh, quite evident that uh, uh, all of this is, uh, has a, 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 mood, a, a common core. And uh, the fact that there is this Ostrowski representation behind and the Sturmian graph and all of these properties are uh, different uh, uh, consequences of the same uh, uh, combinatorial structure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very, very nice talk. Thank you. Thank you very much.